Hello and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of everyone who's helping to lead worship today, we welcome you. We're so excited you are here as we continue in our series, Stories to Live By, and as we have communion for all people today. More about that in just a moment. But I want to extend a special welcome to everyone who may be joining us for the first time, and I just encourage you particularly to make sure Sure that you fill out our contact form. The um, connection for that is right in the comment section. Just click on that. Make sure that you give us your email address because we just love to be able to connect with you, get you our e-newsletter, which has all of the information about things going on with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. There's also a place there for prayer concerns that go right to our pastors and to our prayer team. So please use that contact form today. All of our folks first time and anybody who's joining with us for worship, we just love to be able to connect with you. Now today is communion for all people. And that means all people, that means you. So we hope that you will join with us in communion today, but you will need to get uh, gather up some bread or crackers or some kind of baked good that you can eat during communion and then some kind of beverage, juice or water or coffee Coffee, whatever you've got, some kind of beverage, and uh, have those close to you. We'll be celebrating that Holy Communion later on in the worship service, and you'll want to have those things with you. Now, when we do gather for worship, we covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. And that means that we promise we're going to fully participate because this isn't just some kind of random video you're watching. We are worshiping God together, celebrating Holy Communion together, praying together. So we encourage you to fully participate in all of those things. Sing the songs, say the prayers. When it's time to do communion, do communion with us. We encourage you to turn off other devices, other distractions, really focus in, light a candle if you need to to help you, all of those things, but we covenant to participate together. And then we covenant to be a blessing. And that means that all of the ways that we are worshiping together today, so the way we're in the comment section, the way we may be gathered with other people as we're worshiping, just all of this that we're putting out into the community, we want it to be a blessing for everyone involved. So please join us in that. As we continue in our time of worship, we're going to be brought together with a call to worship, and we encourage you to join in that time as well. Welcome to worship. <laughs> Hello, we are the Rao family. I'm Ashley. I'm Barry. I'm Lucy. And this is Penny. And this is Wendy. Please receive this call to worship. Come, let us celebrate the wonderful gifts that God has given us. Hallelujah. Amen. Every day, God blesses us with love and hope. Hallelujah. Amen. Thanks be to God who provides for us. Hallelujah. Amen. May our hearts be truly grateful and may we show our gratitude in all the ways we live and care for others. Hallelujah. Amen. Please join us in singing forever. Thank you. 
Hi, my name is Nancy Ross and I've been a member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church since 1976. Please join me in spirit of prayer as I pray aloud our opening prayer. Lord, we are grateful to be present with you and one another on this beautiful day. We come with the busy schedules of summer activities crowding our lives. Our souls need to be fed and yet we have so much trouble coming to you and trusting you for the nurture and feeding that will sustain us and all people. Forgive us, Lord. Open our ears, our eyes, and our hearts today to receive the gifts of hope and healing you offer at your holy meal, where there is more than enough for everyone. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join me in sharing the peace of Christ. You can say, peace be with you, and respond, and also with you. Share that in the comments with one another, with me, and with these folks in our church community. Peace be with you. I'm Gary Niehaus. I do play once in a while at the praise band, thanks to Becca. And peace be with you. Okay. Good morning. I'm Rose Jarka Lazari, and I've been a member of Douglas for many, many, many years, a few decades, and peace be with you. Hello, everyone. My name is Glenn Jackson. I'm the pastor of Progressive Church and God in Christ here in Springfield, Illinois. I just would like to give you a warm greeting and say peace be with you. Thank you and God bless. Get ready, everybody. It is time for small talk. I want to encourage all of the children who are joining with us in online worship to get in really close to your device and to your screen so that you can see and hear everything with small talk. This time is, med is led by Miss Laurie, who's our director of children and youth ministries, and her assistant, Laud the Lamb. So let's get ready right now for small talk. Hi everyone, it is Miss Lori and Laud and his helper, Cohen. And today we have, I'm really hungry. Are you hungry? Yeah? And we have a lot of people to feed today. So Laud went shopping. What'd you get? What do you have? What's in the bag? A fish. We have a, we, we have a fish. Yeah. What else do we have? Because this isn't going to do it. This isn't going to... I don't even know how to cook this. And br We have a fish and bread. There's like thousands of people we have to feed. <gasps> this is reminding you of a story. It is reminding God of when Jesus was with his disciples and thousands of people came to hear Jesus speak and they could hear everybody's tummies rumbling and they didn't have food for everybody so there was a little boy that was there and he had two loaves of bread and a fish and since you can have my lunch that I brought well it worked Jesus kept breaking the bread into pieces and magically, not magically, it was the Holy Spirit, but he kept breaking pieces of bread off to give to all of the people that were hungry. And all 5,000 got fed, right? So remember, that through God, you can do all things, okay? When you put your, your heart into it, through God, you can do all things. Have a great day, guys. Enjoy some fish and bread. Bye. Good morning. I'm Liz Schwartzkopf. I'm on the Nurture Committee with Sue Greenfield. I'm chair of the Nurture Committee. Today's reading is from the Bible is John chapter 6 verses 1 through 13. Let us open our hearts and minds to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. Jesus went across the Galilee Sea, that is the Tiberias Sea. A large crowd followed him because they had seen the miraculous signs he had done among the sick. Jesus went up a mountain and sat there with his disciples. 
It was nearly time for Passover, the Jewish festival. Jesus looked up and saw the crowd, large crowd coming toward him. He asked Philip, where will we buy food to feed these people? Jesus said this to test him, for he already knew what he was going to do. Philip replied, more than half a year's salary worth of food wouldn't be enough for each person to have even a little bit. One of his disciples, Andrew, P Simon Peter's brother, said, A youth here has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good is that for a crowd like this? Jesus said, Have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass there. They sat down, about 5,000 of them. Then Jesus took the bread. When he had given thanks, he distributed it to those who were sitting there. He did the same with the fish, each getting as much as they wanted. When they had plenty to eat, Jesus said to his disciples, gather up the leftover pieces so that nothing will be wasted. So they gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves that had been left over by those who had eaten. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen. I'm so enjoying our summer worship series, Stories to Live By, here with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, and I hope that you are too. We are lifting up some of the stories and verses from our Bible that have been uh, particularly meaningful for the various preachers that are leading us in worship over the summer. And I hope that you will continue to join with us for this series in online worship or join with uh, Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m. in the sanctuary. You are not going to want to miss a single week as we continue to share in these stories together. I wanted to share this particular story about Jesus because I believe it gets to the heart of so much of our anxiety and concerns about being human beings living together in our world. This story certainly gets to that for me. And that basic anxiety is about having enough. Have you ever worried about having enough? I feel silly even asking the question. Of course you have in all kinds of different ways, probably. Now, I'm not what you might call a classic worrier, but there are situations where I can get really riled up in worry. And one of those for me is when I'm getting ready to throw a party of all things, no matter how small or large that party is. I always worry about whether there will be enough food or not. Whether it's Thanksgiving for the family, a small get-together for coffee and a treat with friends, or a birthday party, whatever, I worry. And I'm a classic overcooker, as in I'm a classic overpreparer of multiple of dishes for whatever meal it is that I'm in charge of. I'm actually in the midst of getting ready for a family get-together right now that's going to happen next week, and I'm a little bit anxious about it. Besides changing our venue so we can get together outside for maximum fun and COVID-19 safety, I have lists and lists of lists on what to prepare and how much to prepare and all of the ingredients that I need. Well, I have to confess that my list of dishes and the amounts I'm scheduled to make is just now at this point completely out of hand. It's a tea party, so I currently have five different kinds of sandwiches, two kinds of scones, six kinds of cookies and sweets, and two cakes on my list, not to mention the fresh fruits and veggies and the little whatnots and what have you. It's really just way too much. What I have planned at this point will feed an army. Now, blessedly, I have also gained some wisdom from experience with this kind of thing, which comes with the age, don't you know? In my experience, even when there's a pile of unexpected guests at these gatherings, there's always more than enough food to go around. So in my preparations this weekend, I'm paring down my menu and amounts, working on quelling my anxiety, and seeking to enjoy the process more, because I love to cook. So I'm seeking just really to enjoy that part of it. My worry about having enough food for this tea party is kind of funny and ultimately doesn't really matter in the big picture of life. 
but many of us worry over having enough in some really profound ways. Do we have enough time or energy or money or resources or rest or health? We are surrounded by messages all the time that if some is good, then more is even better. And it makes us wonder if there is such a thing as enough. Which financial planner, planner has ever said, you have enough money to retire? Which parents of a junior in high school have ever said, we have enough to send this kid to college? We continue to have debates in Congress about whether there is enough money to support public health and infrastructure and education, not to mention supporting the critical health and education and safety needs of our climate and peoples around our world. At the heart of these debates is that underlying worry that me and mine don't have enough, though there's certainly not enough for those who are without or those who are outside of my circle. Our world certainly seems to have enough pandemic, enough hunger, enough war, enough violence, enough injustice, enough misinformation, enough lying, enough mistrust, and enough climate destruction. When is enough enough? I know that too often in my life I have looked at my resources and have said this is just not equal to the task of meeting the needs of the world around me. In my ministry, there have been many, many times I have felt like I was nowhere close to faithful enough, smart enough, capable enough, compassionate enough, or focused enough to do the work which God had put before me. One afternoon, I was in a church office alone, and the phone rang. I picked up to find a young woman on the phone, and she randomly picked the number of the church out of the phone book of all things. She began telling me her story. Uh, out of the blue, it just poured out of her. She had fallen off the wagon in her drinking addiction. She was deeply depressed, and she was preparing to just drink herself to death. As she was telling me her story, I remember feeling that I kind of wished she hadn't called me, that she had called somebody else, someone with more time, more knowledge, and at that moment, someone with more compassion than me. But in my heart, I also knew that she probably called the church for a reason. And though I was pretty sure I didn't feel up to the task, I was pretty sure that God was up to the task. So I resolved to do the things that I knew how to do and just trusted God would pick up the rest. We met together, we prayed together, we covenanted together to work through that most desperate hour that she was having and just live through that day and then worry about tomorrow and then the next day. I believe God blessed that relationship. She got reconnected with 12 Step, met some other folks in recovery associated with the church, made friends in small group, and began, as she would say, to do business with God again. Through all of this, it was clear to me that God was doing what I couldn't do on my own. It turned out that my not enough was more than enough for God. This isn't just a story about my ministry or my experiences. This is a story of what God does through the ministry of God's people in the world all the time. We see it right here in our story to live by today with Jesus and his disciples. A huge multitude had gathered to witness Jesus' healing and teaching. Jesus turns to one of his disciples, Philip, and asks a simple question. How are we going to feed all these people? Philip responds out of that place with that voice of anxiety and scarcity that we all know so very well. He says, six months wages wouldn't be enough to feed all these people. Maybe for everybody could get a little bit of a taste of food, but, but that's all. And then another disciple, Andrew, he turns up with a young person who has five loaves of bread and two fish who offers what he has to Jesus. But how on earth was that going to feed 
all of these people. It might feed a couple of people, but how could this be any consequence in the face of thousands of people? It's not nearly enough. Then Jesus gives thanks for what is offered. He distributes it to all of the people gathered, and over 5,000 people are fed, well-fed, abundantly fed, with baskets of leftovers. It's a miracle. No bones about it, no punches. It's a straight-out miracle that shows exactly who Jesus is. And that's the point. God asks us to bring what we have, offer it to God. And through the miracle of God's love, power, grace, and blessings, God says it will be more than enough. Not just enough, but more than enough. Abundant, in fact. With baskets of love and hope and peace and mercy left over to share. We see this miracle every day in the lives of people connecting in faith with our church, with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, with ministries associated with our church, like Wouldn't It Be Lovely and Compass for Kids and the Food Pantry, in small groups and prayer group and youth group and in conversations, in giving and loving and hoping and persevering in service and compassion. No, it does not always work out perfectly for everyone in all situations. And God knows we have a long way to go in continuing to work together in the power of the Holy Spirit toward God's purposes for us and for our world. But this story to live by calls us to remember, to trust in the abundance of God's love and goodness, to offer what we have, even when we don't think it could ever be enough. And to let us, our church, our families, our connections, and our systems be turned over to overturned by God's miracle of life-giving abundance. Amen. Please join us in singing, I Come With Joy. It's time to celebrate Holy Communion for all people. And now would be the time, if you haven't done so, to get your baked good, your crackers, your bread, whatever it is you have, your beverage. Uh, bring those close to you so that we can have them ready to eat and drink and celebrate together. Every time we come together for Holy Communion, we are reminded in such a real way of today's story to live by of Jesus breaking and sharing the bread with great multitudes of people with more than enough for everyone to eat, with a pile of leftovers too. And so today, Jesus Christ invites everybody to this meal of Holy Communion. Wherever you are and whoever you are, church member or not a church member, with your culture and race, whatever your age, child, youth, adult, with your gender identity and sexual orientation, sitting alone or gathered with other people, in the fullness of who you are in whatever state you find yourself today and wherever you are. You are welcome here. This is Jesus' abundant, life-giving meal, and you are invited to participate however you want to participate today. We're going to continue in our prayers, and I invite you to join aloud in our responses. That's our next prayers that we say together. And we're going to have an opportunity for you to offer your own prayers aloud in your hearts and in the comments as well. So please join with me. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right to give our thanks and praise. Loving God, we are so grateful that you have created us in your image, that we are intimately bound together with you, in you, and through you, that even when we break away from you, your love is always reaching out to us, and you always welcome us back that you continue to feed us with your bread of life with more than enough for all people. We thank you for Jesus in whom your abundant hope and never-ending love is made real to us and in us. We are grateful that you heal and sustain us through this communion meal. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that makes the fruit of hope grow in and through us, reviving us and strengthening us for work in your world. We offer the prayers of our hearts to you today, loving God in full trust and confidence. We pray for all who are sick and suffering, for all who need your healing in body, mind, spirit, and relationship, those in the hospital recovering from surgery, all struggling with addiction, all seeking answers and treatment in so many ways. We hold close all who are grieving, knowing that you enfold them in your care. We pray for our world, especially for people living in the midst of the reality of war, violence, and natural disaster. For all people experiencing increases in COVID-19 infection, serious illness and death, here in Springfield and Sangamon County, in Illinois, in Missouri, Arkansas, Alabama, Texas, Florida, California, and so many places in our country and across the world. Loving God, we lift up our exhausted healthcare workers who continue to provide loving care in the midst of preventable illnesses and deaths. Help them, loving God, to feel your strength and presence and help us to support them too. Strengthen all of us to do all we can to help people get vaccinated and to practice precautions. We pray for our world and environment, for us to work together to stop global climate change and to care for one another and our planet in this necessary way. Loving God, we are so grateful for you today for the abundant blessings of our lives, for the way you take our offerings and create miracles, for all the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, for healing and hope, for celebrations small and large, and for all the ways we see and experience the love of Jesus each and every day. Lord, in your mercy, receive all of our prayers, the ones we speak aloud, the ones we hold in our hearts, the ones that we share, in the comments. I invite you to pick up your bread. On the night in which he gave himself for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. You can put your bread down. And I invite you to pick up your cup. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. You can put your cup down. And so remembering your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice of love and service, intimately bound with Christ's offering for us. And I invite you to lift up your hands as we all pray together for the Holy Spirit. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered across geography and time, and pour out your Holy Spirit on the gifts of bread and cup that each of us has brought. Make all these gifts of bread and cup be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that we may be for the world the living body of Christ, redeemed and empowered by his saving love. You can put your hands down. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Jesus comes again and we feast with him and one another face to face at his heavenly banquet table. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, connected in all places and at all times, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. And please join me in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying the Lord's Prayer. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join us in singing, Break Thou the Bread of Life. The bread and juice, the baked goods and beverage that we will eat are a tangible experience of Jesus' abundant grace and love, feeding us, healing us, and changing us from the inside out. I invite you to pick up your piece of bread, eat and experience that this is Jesus' love for you. I invite you to pick up your cup, Drink and experience that this is Jesus' love for you. And now please join with me in our prayer of thanks. Eternal God, thank you for this holy mystery in which you give yourself to us through the bread and cup. Send us from this meal in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to others in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm Nancy Vereen, lay leader at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm talking to you today to give you thanks for your dedicated giving to support the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Because of your generosity, it is possible to support a variety of activities in our community, including our recent Youth Serve Community Week, Wouldn't It Be Lovely, Camp Compass, Habitat for Humanity, Scouting, our online ministries, and so many more. Our friends at Compass for Kids are seeking volunteers and new managers for their fall program. Please see Molly Barrett if you are interested. The church has worked to make giving easy. You can use the online portal at the church website, automatic bill pay, ACH bank draft, or you can just send in your check or bring it in person when you come in on a Sunday morning. I enjoy the convenience of a monthly bank draft. Please watch the Courier for a print newsletter, which should arrive in your mailbox this week. It will have important information on how you can put your faith into action, supporting our music ministries, our children and youth program, and a new season of worship at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Corinthians 9, 6 through 8 tells us that whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Thank you again for all that you do by giving of your time, talent, and your financial gifts to support our church and its ministries. Please join us in singing, I Come With Joy. And thus with joy we meet our Lord, His presence.
Thank you so much for joining in online worship today with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We just really hope this whole experience has been meaningful for you, has been uplifting, has been helpful for you in your journey of faith, and that you will join with us again very soon for online worship or join with us for worship in the sanctuary at 11 a.m. on Sundays. Everyone is welcome. We uh, want to be able to connect with you and be a part of your life of faith. So again, I want to encourage you to use that contact form uh, that's pinned right in the comment section so that you can uh, connect with us and we can connect with you. And remember that there's a place there for your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. We love to pray with you and we want to be connected with you. So please do use that contact form. And now as you go into your day, go knowing that God loves you completely that Jesus Christ offers you abundant gifts and enough every day of what you need, and that the Holy Spirit is going to lead and guide you into ultimate, wonderful, glorious purpose every day in the name of Christ. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen.